It's TK Friday, and today in the joy of editing, I'm revisiting an old friend. This is going to be another full edit. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing. It is TK Friday, my favorite day of the week, and I hope it is yours, too. A little bit over a year ago on a TK Friday, I processed this image using the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Now, I started out in Lightroom and converted it to black and white, took it into Photoshop and used TK8. But I thought, you know what? I want to revisit this because now we have some new product like the TK Magic Mixer for doing black and white conversions, and now we're up to TK9 version 3. Today we'll start out in Lightroom and I will send this into Photoshop as a color image. I'll be using TK9 version 3 to develop the image along with the TK Magic Mixer. The edit will be different than the original edit. I'll link my original edit at the end of this video in case you want to go and watch it and see what I've done differently. But I thought it'd be fun today revisiting an old friend. And isn't it always fun to revisit an old friend? By the way, if you're watching this video on Friday, October 25th, 2024, this is the last day of the launch sale for TK9 version 3. You can save 25% off your entire purchase over at the TK Web Store. You can get the Magic Mixer. It's only $10. You'll save 25% off that. Anything you purchase, Sean Bagshaw's new luminosity masking courses, the button-by-button -button video guide, of course, the TK9 plugin for Photoshop version 3. Use my promo code DK25. You'll save 25% off. I have links that will take you right over to Tony Kuyper's web store in the description below this video. When you use my promo code DK25, I make a small commission and you're supporting my channel when you do that. So thank you very much. Let's get started. As always, I start out here in Lightroom, do some basic adjustments. I'm using a linear profile for Robert's camera. As far as detail, a little bit of sharpening. Lens corrections, I always check on remove chromatic aberration as well as enable profile corrections. And then for transform, I clicked on auto just to make sure the image was nice and straight. And also I did do a one by one square crop in this image. I think it looks really good for this image. I believe I forgot to mention Today's image comes to us from Robert Colley. And you can download the image and the PDF notes and give the edit a try. It's a great way of learning. And now at this point, I right click on the image, go to edit in and click on edit in Photoshop 2025. And here we are inside of Photoshop 2025 and let's get started. Now, I always like to start out with that balance and contrast adjustment. So what we're going to do is come up to the TK9 multi mass panel, click on the luminosity mass button. I'll click on midtones three to protect shadows and highlights from clipping. I'll put it to a color grading tool. And then I think I'll start with shadows. I'll click in the shadow button. Let's darken up those shadows. And I'll take it over to right there, minus 29. Now I'll click on midtones. And I just want to lighten up the midtones slightly to right here, plus nine. Now let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here is after. Now it's time for the black and white conversion. I'll click this button. That opens up my Magic Mixer. Now you could still do this edit if you don't have the Magic Mixer. The Magic Mixer controls Photoshop's channel mixer. Just refer to my PDF notes for help. Once your Magic Mixer panel was open, you could click the plus to do a basic black and white conversion. You can click this randomization button just to see what kind of different looks you can get. See how this click it here. See how it keeps changing here. And you can watch these sliders changing down here. And you might find something that you really like. And once you get something, then you could start tweaking it. Or you could click on the different color channels here, like red, green, blue. I kind of like blue. Here's cyan, magenta, and yellow. I think I'll go back to blue. I like this. Now, once you get one you like, you can start working with these sliders. Now, you'll notice if I move this cyan red slider one way, you'll notice these other sliders are moving also. And the reason that is, if we look at Photoshop's channel mixer, what you want to do with the channel mixer is always maintain that 100% total there. Now you'll notice whenever I drag these, we always maintain 100%. But if I were to come up here and drag these, I would get off 100%. And that is why it is so hard to use a channel mixer in Photoshop, but the magic mixer makes it easy. It turns it into something magical. This does it all for you. But all you do is adjust it. And once you get a look that you kind of like, you're good to go. But you'll notice we have this button right here. If I click it, we can save out presets. If you get a conversion that you like, you can save it as a preset. When I was working on 
on this edit the other day, I came up with this chair and shadows preset. So I'm going to click on this. And that was the look that I liked right there. And these are my settings. And all this information is in your notes, by the way. Once you've done your conversion, you can fine tune it. And if you come to the Magic Mixer panel, you see this button right here, click it. And you'll note that we get a color luminosity adjustment layer. And it sits under the Magic Mixer layer. Now, it's not working with the black and white conversion. It is working with the colors of the image. But what it does is anything that is red in the image, if I move this slider to the right, it'll lighten up any of the red tones, the luminosity values, okay? Or if I move it to the left, it'll darken up the red tones. Same with yellows and greens and so on. What I'll do right now, I'm going to shut this layer off and enter the values from my notes and show you what I came up with for this adjustment. And remember, this is just fine tuning the black and white conversion. And I am back. Now, this is before I made my adjustment. And now let me turn this color loom layer on. Here is after. So again, here's before and here is after just the fine tuning of the black and white conversion. Now I'll make the magic mixer layer active and we will continue developing this image. I'll click this button to close my magic mixer panel. And what I want to do is I want to use a TK action and add a clarity action. And it's right here. I'm going to click on this and black and white images love clarity, texture and detail. And notice I have a high pass filter. And what I want to do is adjust this radius a good bit over to right there 100.1 sounds like a radio station 100.1 on your fm dial and i'll click ok and now let me shut this layer off here is before and here is after but see all that beautiful detail coming out i really like it now let's add some texture and detail and to do that i want to go into the camera raw filter so we have a button on the combo cx panel and i love this button it's been updated when you click it it stamps all your layers together turns it into a smart object and then sends you into the camera raw filter where you can make adjustments and the fact that it is a smart object you can always go back and readjust it if needed so it's all pretty cool and it's really fast now what you need to do is come to the right hand side of the interface and look for effects if effects isn't open just click right in this area for effects and then we have texture. I'll adjust the texture first. I'll drag this to the right over to right there, 40. And now let's work on clarity. I'll just do a little bit of clarity. How about that? Plus 25. And how about some dehaze? That'll increase some of the dark contrast. If I move this to the right, I'll take it to plus 20. Oh, look at that. That looks really good. And I like it over the entire image. If you want to see it before and after, you can click on this eye and hold as you're clicking. There's before and here's after. Or you could come down here and click this button to see the before. Click it again to see the after. I like it. And now all we need to do is click OK. And that'll send us back into Photoshop. And now here, I'll shut this layer off. Here's before Here's after, and remember, you can always take your opacity and pull it off if you think the effect is too strong, or you could go back to the camera raw filter and readjust. But for me, a black and white image with some good texture is like a marriage made in heaven. And now as I study this image, what I'm thinking is I would like to darken this area from this top right hand corner on an angle down to about this area somewhere right in here. And we could use a linear gradient to do that. Now to do this darkening, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer in a multiply blend mode. But I want to show you something that is really nice. It's a new feature in TK9 version 3. If you hold your shift key down and click on the multiply button, you'll get a curves adjustment layer with a black mask in the multiply blend mode and the layer is named for you multiply brush and you're also set up with a white brush that you could go ahead and paint on darkening effects on your image or if you want to use a gradient this is also great because it sets you up to use a linear gradient so now i'll click on the gradient tool and make sure you're using the live gradient this is a drop down you don't want classic gradient you want gradient which is the live gradient Gradient. And then right here, this is a drop down. Click on here. You want to make sure in the basics folder, if your folder isn't open, just click right here and click on this button right here. This gives you a black white gradient. And then what we want to do is make sure you have reverse checked on. And then the other thing is make sure you click on this button for 
linear gradient. And now we can draw our gradient. I'm coming right here. I'm clicking and dragging down. And what I want to do is drag to like maybe right about here. And then you see this diamond. We can make an adjustment. You see, I like to call this like a window blind effects. You see how I can adjust that. And I want to take it down to maybe somewhere right around here. And maybe I'll just move this over just a little bit to right here. Now, if you don't want to see this line, if you click right here on the curves icon, that'll go away. Now, it is pretty dark back here, but I like it. I think for the artistic look, it looks really good. But what we can do is I need to get to my multi mask panel right now. My color grading tools in the way I'll click the X. Nothing changes on any color grading tool layers. And what I want to do is go and click on this button to go into the edit blend if mode. And this is new with TK9 version three. We've always had no darks one, no darks two, no lights one, no lights two. But now we have two new buttons. This button here for no darks one and no lights one protecting both areas at once and this button for protecting no darks two and no lights two at the same time and this button right here no darks one no lights one will be great for this situation because i want to protect my darkest darks back in here and i want to protect my lightest lights up in this area watch the image when i click on this button you notice how i can see a little bit of detail back in here not too much but just a little bit more and it has a nice mystery i'm not darkening up my light area and i'm bringing back some detail back in this dark area. All right, next up, I'd like to duplicate what I did here down here. I'll start here and do another gradient, but I'll draw it up this way. So let's go ahead, hold our shift key down and click on our multiply adjustment layer. We get another multiply brush, which is a curves adjustment layer, black hide all mask, multiply blend mode. I'm going to click on my gradient tool and I'm going to click right here and drag up to somewhere right around this area right about here. Now that's too strong. I'm gonna click right here so we can get rid of this line and see what we're doing here. And what I wanna do here is pull back on my opacity. And what I'll do is take it back. Let's try right here, 80%. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here is after. Again, before and after. But look at that nice drama we have in this image. I really love this. And now let's throw a basic vignette on here because we can darken down here and darken up in here a little bit. These areas are already dark, but let's go ahead and try basic vignette. If your TK actions aren't open, click your TK button, click vignette. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up. Just click OK. Now let's see a before and after. I'll shut off the vignette layer. Here's before and here's after. I really like it. I love the way the light streams through the window, casting these shadows from the chair. I want to darken them up a bit. I'll need to get to the multi mask panel, but right now the edit blend if panel is in the way, so let's close it. I'll click the X. I need to make a mask to target the shadows, so I'm going to click on the luminosity mask button, and we're going to be working with dark tones, so I'm going to try darks one. Here's darks one. The light areas we're seeing are the actual shadows, and you can also see some of these light gray areas here. There's some lighter shadows in here, which I want to get. If I go to like darks two, I'll miss those. So we're going to go to darks one. We're going to output this to a burn tool. You can use the left or right side of the burn tool. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the right side. So we'll click right here. And you can see I'm painting through a selection on a blank pixel layer in the soft light blend mode. And right now my brush opacity is at 10%. I'm going to type my two key to go to 20%. And let me paint over some of these shadows. Now I paint it once I lifted my brush. I'm going to paint again. It gets a little darker. I'm going to go over these areas in here a few times. I'm going to come down into here and paint a little bit down into these lighter shadows. And I'm going to paint across this chair. Let's get this shadow in here. Some of these lighter shadows in here. I'm going to paint over those a few times. I'm going to get this shadow in here, painting over it a few times. And I'm lifting my brush every time you see I'm painting, making the brush a little smaller. I'll go over this a couple times. Let's go over some of these shadows in here, maybe off here a little bit and down here, over in here. Let me go ahead and shut this layer off. Let's see, here's a before and here's an after. Again, before and here's an after. And I think I like it. I might just wanna get this a little bit darker, like right here. Okay, and I think I'm good. One more time, before and after.
And next, I want to turn my attention to the shadow on the chair here. Now, this is more of a mid-tone, so I'm not going to use a luminosity mask. I'm going to use a zone mask instead. I believe it's going to be more effective. I'll click on the zone mask button, and I want to sample this tone like right here, and we'll click OK. Now, we can fine-tune this a little bit. I'll take in the Titan slider and drag it into the left. So I think maybe right about here really isolates that. And now this is a new feature in TK9 version 3. If you double click the levels button for refining levels, you will get an auto level adjustment. And it's great for zone and color masks. So I'm going to double click auto and see how the light areas get really light. So you get pure white and pure black, which is really cool, which really gives you a stronger mask. I love this new feature. And now let's output this to a burn tool. So I'll click on the right side of the burn tool. And now with 20% brush opacity, I'm just going to paint on these shadows here just to darken them up just a little wee bit like so. I think that's going to be good. Let me shut this off. Here is before and here is after. Again, before and after. And I like it. I think that's good. Now we are almost done. And with an image like this, a black and white image, I highly recommend that you check it for shadow and highlight clipping. And an easy way to do that is click this button on either the combo or CX panel. I'm going to click it. And the blue areas are clipped shadows and the little bit of red we see around the edges here are clipped highlights. Now for a black and white image like this, that little minimal clipping is fine. You don't have to worry about it. If you had more, there's ways that we could get rid of that but for this image we don't really need to do it so i'm not going to get into that right now to get rid of the live clipping layer just click this button again and it goes away two more steps and we're done the next step is some cleanup there's some little light areas that came up when i brought up detail in the image like you know like little specks and things i want to get rid of those so what we'll do is this is new to TK9 version 3. This button has been changed a little bit. R-E-M-C-A-F, standing for Remove Tool and Content Aware Fill. When you just click it, you get a blank pixel layer and you're set up with a Remove Tool. And then we could do things like just come down in here. And anything we want to clean up, we can just paint over and clean up. And what I'll do is just go ahead and clean some of this stuff up. I'm not going to make you watch me do all this because you would get really bored. I'll pause the recording and I'll get right back to you. And I'm back. Now, this is before the cleanup, and now here is the after. And I like that much better. And now, one final thing I want to do, and that is add a little bit of sepia tone to this image, and we can go back to the Magic Mixer to do that. If your Magic Mixer isn't open, click on the Magic Mixer button, and come to the bottom right-hand side and click this button right here. This is for toning images, and when you click it, you're going to get a beautiful sepia tone. And this is what I want for this image, but I don't want it in my highlights, just dark tones, so we can use Edit Blend Diff. So I'm going to click on my Edit Blend Diff button on the multi-mask panel and click Darks 1. And now it's only applied to darks. If I uncheck gray, now it's applied to the entire image. But again, if I check on gray, now it's only applied to dark tones. And I really like that. Let me shut this layer off. Here's without the sepia tone. And here it is with. But for this image, and it doesn't work on all images, but on this image, it has that old, nostalgic, mysterious look. I think the sepia looks really good. Now, if it's too strong, you could pull back in saturation. You could change the hue to any hue that you want, but this is sepia, and it defaults at sepia. But you can also pull back on the layer opacity if you want to decrease the effect, but I like it just the way it is. Now, let's see an overall before and after. I'm going to come to my combo panel and click this button right here. We started out here. And now we end up here. Pretty cool. Now let me show you the original edit I did about a year and a couple months back. I'm going to click on this image right here. And this is what my edit looked like before. So compare that to the edit I did today. I like them both. Two different interpretations. Two completely different edits. Again, we're back to today's edit. I think I like this one better, but you know, that could change tomorrow. It's all subjective. I usually like the last thing I've done the best. Okay, so I'm enjoying this one right now. I'd highly recommend that you download the image and the PDF notes and give the edit a try. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to an end. I hope you all have a great weekend. And don't forget, if you're watching on October 25th, 2024,
This is the last day for the TK9 version 3 launch sale. Use my promo code DK25 and save 25% off your entire purchase. If you enjoyed today's full edit tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.